Hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 559. 559 of the Agostino Zynga Show. I hope you are doing well wherever this lovely podcast may find you. I'm back. Back, babies. Hair's looking a bit wild, but I'm loving the fact that I don't have this mass on top of my head. That's probably been something that I've been repeating ad nauseum on here i know i do apologize but honestly this life of having to have a massive hair on your head it's it's a good thing because in terms of style tips and um ways that you can wear it with outfits because because in my opinion personally and maybe you guys might disagree but i don't think cornrows on top of your head goes with a lot of outfits like it doesn't necessarily go with some of the more like take ivy loafers kind of outfits that i've got it maybe doesn't go with some of the streetwear looks i've got it looks a bit weird but i feel like that kind of mass hair that i usually have it works well with chelsea boots it works well with trainers it works well with vans it works with the slippers i mean it's kind of a universal look but the only thing the one of the annoying things about it i've noticed as well i am i would definitely say i'm i'm one of the sweatiest men in the world for sure i'm definitely top 10 in terms of sweat like i can per i can um i can uh, perspirate in ways that no other man has ever perspirated that you've ever seen in your life right this is something that we can never kind of put to one side or we can never kind of disregard i do i sweat a lot it's just something in me i'm an oily guy i'm a sweaty guy maybe as well as it didn't matter even when i was at my skinniest i was still sweating just is what it is so as I got older, I started to realize that I couldn't be that guy that I would run for trains or run for buses or run long distances, like when I'm just outdoors, you know, maybe to catch up a friend or whatever. I couldn't do that. I just have to be the guy just take walks because if, remember if I try and run, you know, a, a few meters, I instantly start to sweat. I instantly start to get my head, start to leak in. I start patting my head. And I just look a mess. So I kind of learned how to kind of temper that to some regard. But a lot of it has to do with my hair because I've had the same hairstyle for many, many years. And it's essentially like wearing a one of those finchulet woolly hats. You know those woolly hats that people have where it's got like the finchulet layer on the inside. This little kind of fleecy lining that you've got in there to kind of make your head um, warmer in the cold seasons. Um, but obviously I've got one built into my head. And sometimes, or oftentimes, I'm also wearing hats on top of that. So I'm wearing a woolly hat that's insulated and I've also got another hat that I wear on top of it for style points. So of course my face is going to be leaking. But I noticed today, I went out, um, I actually purchased a bicycle, which I'll talk about another time. But I've got a bicycle, I went to purchase that and I went and rode my bike back and I was not sweating. My face wasn't leaking and I'm not as fit as I was when I was cycling all the time. So you can never say, it's like, oh yeah, you're way more fit and I know it's not to do that whatsoever I'm actually bigger than I was back then and I wasn't sweating as much my face was not bone dry don't get me wrong but it wasn't dripping like I was in the past I was like oh my god it had a lot to do with the hair so even though I don't like the style too tough it's not something I'm going to keep for a long time I think it's something I might have to rotate here and there just to give my hair a breather maybe once every other month whatever right just kind of have my hair out have it braided have it out have it braided have it out have it braided i think that might be the way to go forward or the other way to go forward with it to give my hair some time and breathe a little bit i might go for the locks approach just lock it up playboy carty style yeah get the locks in there you know nba young boy style that at least will give you some level of like breathability right there'll be some parts that can actually get some air and whatnot so it doesn't feel too stuffy in there that maybe is a hope going forward but again i have to go through the same bloody song and dance and up and down trouble and struggle that i have to go through with flipping afro afro hairdressers and stuff which i've always had an issue with i've mentioned plenty of times on this podcast the problems i have with these bloody guys Ugh, um but yeah, <laughs> that might be the option I have to go through, but it is what it is. So far, I'm happy and I'm feeling good about that. But of course, I have to move on to more troubling news. You know, we can't kind of, you know, take this um, time to listen to the podcast and not mention the thing that's been on top of everyone's lips, the big elephant in the room, the thing that's kind of gathered everyone's attention. The thing that's really made people think, what am I going to do next? Ah, oh, the club's opened in Kiev. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> 
<laughs> Obviously, the conflict happening in Ukraine, isn't it? Imagine if so, that's what I opened the show with. Oh my God, I can't go clubbing. Damn it. Kiev clubs are closed. Imagine that's how you open the show. With. No, I'm not talking about that. But yeah, the conflict happening in Ukraine now at the moment is absolutely gnarly to watch from afar, especially for those of us who were joking about it the other day, who were sharing memes about World War Three, who didn't think Putin would basically escalate to this level who didn't think russia would invade parts of ukraine who didn't think you know would see videos of buildings being bombed of people running for shelter in underground stations that we were all kind of a bit naive we kind of thought nah this is just another one of those kind of idle threats political just just uh jostling or whatnot uh maybe some you know some arrangements will be made towards the end deals will be signed blah de, blah 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 but we never thought it was going to go to a point where we were literally going to see you know planes flying really low firing missiles into buildings people running like screaming we never thought we'd get to that level and it did in the space of a couple of days so that's been pretty gnarly to see especially off the backdrop of because for the most part i judge how the world is reopening or the the kind of the state we're in during the pandemic based on the clubs i know it's a bit dumb short-sighted really bimbo of me but again this is the interest i have so that's why i kind of look i kind of view the world through because for the most part in most places the clubs and the hospitality industry were the first to close and they're usually the last to open so if they're opening it usually is a good sign that okay the pandemic is easing somewhat the numbers aren't as crazy um the world's going back to some sort of semblance of normality people can go and do get about their regular everyday lives blah 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 and it felt like in the last couple of weeks things were changing right you had news of places like france reopening Obviously, Canada's going through what they're going through, but even places like Germany, Berlin were starting to announce things. You have places in Scandinavia, Portugal. You obviously here in the UK, things are back to basically normal. Things were slowly starting to open. You thought, okay, we're going back to some sort of normality. And with the summer coming up in February, you know, it just felt like there was some hope. There was some light at the end of the tunnel. And then, bang, we get hit with something else in this summer it's just and everyone's having sharing that meme at the moment of like you know what the, finally you're going to enjoy your summer and then bang here's putin come over with a flipping chair over your head to kind of throw that in winter disarray but i can't even imagine how it is for people who live in ukraine day to day how they're feeling right now right like legitimately think about that like you're legitimately because there was i remember reading a report something maybe it was on here i read some ra report where they kind of ask the opinions of loads of people who are involved with the, you know, um, Kiev nightlife scene or Ukraine nightlife scene in general in terms of clubs and whatnot. And they were all basically saying a few weeks ago, hey, don't be pan don't panic. Everyone here is continuing life as normal. No one's really paying too much attention to this Russia stuff. They're not taking it seriously. <clears throat> There's no danger. And anyway, the best way to stand in solidarity is to continue living our everyday lives, blah, blah, blah. Where's that effect? And then out of the blue, it just escalates like that. So it is a it is a real kind of, I would say, awakening or maybe wake up call for us, especially uh, those of us who live in, you know, um, Western Europe or the Western world, to kind to kind of realize, especially when it comes to like historic points in history or historic times in history or no, um, important times in history, especially when it comes to large scale wars, where we look back on stuff like World War Two, World War One, blah blah blah. You maybe think it all kind of starts maybe in your head maybe especially with movies too the disneyfication of life whatever it may be you always think it kind of starts with a real bang like it starts off crazy and it doesn't sometimes it just starts off at the dead of night it starts off off the back of you know putin saying we're going to do a training exercise or something. he said about something like those kind of what those sort of words and it's slowly but surely paratroopers are landing into the border <coughs> certain regions and whatnot are getting lit up with the missiles and whatnot like that's what it starts really it starts really kind of quiet quote unquote it's quiet maybe it, it just it doesn't start off in a movie way it doesn't start off with like you know literally people like firing shots off in the air it just starts in a very methodical slow way but usually when it ramps up you know it's i remember describing it to somebody earlier it's equivalent to somebody you get into a fight with somebody and then your head doesn't throw the first punch but they push you what do you do do you keep escalating with another push or do you retaliate with a hit just to kind of get your first hit in that's the kind of what that's what it sort of feels like and it doesn't and usually those exchanges it's very rare unless you're a really mature grown-up person again it's only one-on-one -on -one. this is a whole flipping nation so it's completely different but usually in those instances if somebody puts their hands on you it can only go one way it only escalates upwards it doesn't escalate down 
unless you know you happen to be friends and they can hold you or whatever it usually always goes to the next level so it feels like with this you know unless ukraine flipping puts their arms down and surrenders which why would they do that um this is just going to escalate and get worse so what we're seeing is messed up especially for us living in the uk or us living in western europe especially places where we don't feel like we're connected to it whatsoever it's messed up for us to see it like this but just imagine if you're living there day to day this is like a shock to the system anyway off the back of the pandemic and then it's only going to get worse as the days and weeks progress like you know it is you just know it is um and it's just horrible really really is um this is quickly a guide because of the bbc are quickly going to read over it says ukraine conflict your guide to understanding the story it says russia has launched a full-scale invasion of ukraine as the first day of the assault nears its end the enormity of what has happened could mean it's still difficult to process here's what this it says the first explosions came in the early hours of thursday and I remember seeing it because I was up all night, so I was seeing some of the footage coming in via Twitter and stuff, which has been a pretty good resource. There was a really cool Twitter space that I was a part of that was running for like 10 plus hours that these two guys were running really well. That was awesome to hear them sharing clips and, the, you know, to basically hear them basically they were running it like a TV station. It was pretty sick. They had like a, a, a TV program or news station on in the background. They would, you know, intermittently basically turn it on and let people talk who were basically on TV and you could hear it over the phone. They'd obviously share some insight, in, in, um, insightful articles or whatnot that give you understanding. That like was really, really good. Um, that was also good. But of course, you know, seeing people lives get turned upside down on your feed in real time was a bit of a, a bit of a trip i gotta be honest um katuzia the bbc's marta Shkolov show Kalo was in the capital Kiev and wrote movingly about the initial fear she says I addressed my 10 year old son we had some breakfast sitting at the far windows as we could but he was so scared he vomited Jesus Christ can you can resist as the scale of the attack became clear and the Ukraine military worked to respond many questioned whether the country were able to resist the military might of its neighbours as our defence correspondent Jonathan Bell explains Kiev is outgunned and outnumbered in every sense Jesus, the attack mapped. Geography is at the heart of the story. Ukraine's position between Russia is to the east and countries such as Poland and Romania to the west means it straddles both East European and Russian spheres of influence. This is a major reason why tensions are so high. Russia has long resisted Ukraine's move towards the European Union. But geography is also key to how the invasion played out. Moscow, after all, mounted its attack via air, land and sea. In this piece, we mapped out Russia's attacks. Simple guide to the crisis. Of course, they got it there. One question, why, as fierce fighting continues, the video spread of the tanks rolling into Ukraine, why exactly does what we plan to be put in one? The big picture. John Simpson, our world affairs editor, writes that he feels like it's the end of an era. He compares it to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which marked the collapse of the Soviet Union and saw the global global order was rewritten the invasion of ukraine he writes could be traced back to the collapse of the president putin's um which president putin resents bitterly allies hit back no, we don't really need to hold it but you know you, you get the drift of that and on this article courtesy of cnbc russia's attack on ukraine has begun as the us and europe urge putin to stand down this was quite a chilling video hopefully it plays normally where basically um putin outlines his plans for the invasion he comes across like a very stern man. That's for sure, bro. Bloody hell, he's not ramping. Let's see if the video is it him playing. Is it him talking? Anything? Or is it just the whole thing? <coughs> yes, yeah, got here. Russia and that is see what he announces here. I'll load the sound a little bit as well. Bear with me. There we go. Load the sound. Play it. Just Putin talking. Putin announced it. Кстати, сами американские политики, политологи и журналисты пишут и говорят о том, что внутри США создана в последние годы настоящая империя лжи. Трудно с этим не согласиться. Так оно и есть. Но не надо скромничать. США это все-таки великая страна. Система they don't want to occupy Ukraine. <clears throat> yeah, in the very same line. In the very next line, he says, he warns other countries into, in, attempting to interfere that they would face consequences they have never seen. So pretty stern threat in that regard, right? You don't want you you don't want to take, you don't want to occupy, but then you also don't want anyone else to get involved. Pretty pretty mad. 
and then there's this video too that kind of outlines some of the attacks that happened obviously there's a warning for graphic content so if you're a bit sensitive in that regard make sure you skip this but i'm going to play it downed helicopter that was a plane before firing a missile into a building crazy stuff man tanks rolling into some city in ukraine <coughs> tanks on fire i learned what a javelin was supposedly a javelin is like an anti anti-tank missile people have been using to down a lot of the tanks so that's why that's been happening um one of the most chilling videos i actually saw which i wish i unsaw <clears throat> was a video of a 14 year old girl unfortunately dying as a result of a missile being um basically exploding over her head pretty pretty wild she was basically riding a bike in some car park sort of area in circles as kids do and without realizing pew, you know, missile just comes right behind her and legitimately takes her out completely. It's super, super sad to see, man. God damn. And now, so we'll go back in. And this is a map showing, I think, loads of kind of flight paths of planes basically flying out of Ukraine. I think there was a one gnarly one that showed loads of planes basically avoiding going over Ukraine airspace, you know, in case they got shot down. So that was quite gnarly. And then I think I saw a tweet or an article or something from um, a former Roma manager, Fonseca, who happens to be in Ukraine, living there, because I think he was managing Shakhtar Donetsk for a bit. And then he got fired, but he obviously ended up um getting in a relationship with a lady who's from ukraine so the answer he basically lives there now um on a kind of permanent basis and he's been trying to leave and of course this is a football manager who's got means and the access to basically get a private plane to leave but even he couldn't leave because i'm assuming one of the airports that were bombed by russian troops happened to be some of the smaller ones that you would expect private planes to kind of take off from and they're obviously out of use or maybe you're not allowed to fly out from there regardless so he's basically stuck there and he's made i think he said something along the lines of all i just hope we don't have something fall on top of us jeremy you know I like we're just gonna stay here and help it we can and hopefully nothing bad happens to us you're like jesus christos man really really bleak scenes all over but all i can offer is really thoughts and prayers really in that regard you, you know for anyone that's out there um definitely in my prayers in that regard um it's been tough for all of us around the world especially with the pandemic and all the, the consequences and stuff that's happened off the back of that you know people losing their jobs families being broken up you know people being relocated to different areas like crazy stuff has happened on the back of that i can only imagine how war is going to go down i can only imagine the consequences of war and how you know destructive that can be we're already seeing the numbers are crazy in terms of deaths already you know i reported already there's one little girl that i saw die literally on with my eyes on the video so i can't imagine how worse it's getting over there so again force and prayers everybody out there but um yeah just stay uh, i'm hoping everyone is able to stay somewhat strong i've heard some really stories of people basically going to underground stations because i remember when i wanted to go to kiev when i was doing some research about going to kiev and places i went to visit i remember seeing a i think an underground station that might be one of the deepest stations in europe or something so they've got a lot of really nice underground stations which make it a good place to kind of go and seek shelter if there is going to be wild scale bombing and whatnot i'm not sure again how safe that is to be underground when that's happening but i guess where else can you be you know you basically hope to be underground with rations and then in the hope someone can find you and you can come out instead of being overground i'm assuming in that regard so that's one thing i'm seeing people sharing 
you know, uh, private chats and telegrams or whatnot where they're sharing locations of other safe houses and resources and what there's people have mobilized in a really good way, as per usual. I think humanity always does that. Whenever you doubt humanity, you know, put like a real crisis in front of them and usually people come up trumps. And I think usually from what I've seen with the global, you know, with the way the world is basically global, especially with social media, people are basically taking it within themselves to kind of stand up and do what they can to help the people over there. Um, so far, the latest from what I've read, courtesy of this lady called Joyce Karam, who is what? She's a reporter, I'm assuming it's her name. She's a senior correspondent at the National News. She says as follows, Ukraine calls for general mobilization. Zelensky, who is a um, prime minister president of ukraine says russians have entered kiev which already is a danger a big big red flag especially considering you know what could happen if they do infiltrate kiev and basically start an uprising there on that regard that can be crazy um kiev bombardment in, in imminent uh people shouting in transition as i mentioned ukraine says ukraine says destroyed 30 russian tanks and six helicopters which is good i guess in some regard of a defense 137 ukrainians are dead already i'm not sure if that includes soldiers or if it's all soldiers and civilians but crazy number just in a day or in a day and a half 100,000 displaced says so far by the un people have basically left their homes and gone to seek shelter elsewhere protests in russia are taking place which is good to see people standing up in st petersburg which is again risky as hell you can imagine protesting against a war that putin personally started himself in st petersburg is gutsy and ballsy as hell but big up everyone that is doing it and of course sanctions to come so crazy all things in, uh, involved and again thoughts and prayers out to everybody out there basically affected by i can only imagine what you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis man i really can only imagine then off the back of that off the flip side i was actually thinking to myself it's actually quite refreshing and it's actually been quite nice to not see so many celebrities and hollywood people and what law and influencers run and fall over themselves to try and explain the crisis that's happening in ukraine and russia to try and offer condolences or their opinions or hot takes it's quite refreshing not to see that no one's doing those imagined songs or filming black and white videos of them crying or you know doing whatever crazy posts where they're holding up a sign and painting themselves in the in the colors of the ukrainian flag that everyone's just kind of taking a chill pill and understand that maybe this is way above their level of intellect or whatnot or just care level and they're just kind of doing what they do best and allowing people that actually can help that situation to help it because i think that's a big thing too i think for as much as i've seen people online especially some people that i follow on the high fashion twitter sort of space be like oh i can't really um enjoy the clothes or share all this beautiful stuff or take part in this fashion when i know what stuff is going over when i know so many people are in misery on the other side of the planet or you know basically in russia cool i get it i understand i get the sentiment but really just stick to talking about clothes right stick to sharing mood boards stick to you know sharing the highlights of shows that you liked or picking up designers or talking about someone's outfit at a flipping red carpet event that's what the world needs you for we don't need you to basically you know pretend to be caring or knowledgeable about what's going on in ukraine and russia because you don't and also you're not really going to add anything meaningful to our conversation whatsoever because there are people who legitimately live and breathe these sort of geopolitical um conflicts day to day and this is their kind of time to really bask in the glory of it where they can really offer up their expertise and you sticking your nose in isn't going to help things and talking about people who are not going to help things this is one of them lex friedman the hubris and the narcissism that you need to have in order to sit there and construct such a tweet is just out of this world because i was actually was thinking about lex friedman earlier i was thinking in general how conflicted it is to be a lex friedman fan because in general the guy is a flipping great interviewer one of the best his podcast is absolutely amazing the way that he cuts up the clips on his clips channel and makes them um makes them easily easy to digest and for the most part even if people i don't like i've always found no even if people that i'm not interested in i've always found myself going to the clips checking out something they said and then going to watch the full episode which generally doesn't happen usually when you watch an episode of a show usually when you watch the clips you watch the clips because you don't want to watch the full episode you don't watch a clip of the of a show and then go watch the full but it happens so often with lex friedman i get great book recommendations great stuff about health supplements workouts like great shit really really cool 
Love the guy. I think he's. I think sometimes the way he gargles Joe Rogan nuts is a bit off putting. Sitting there and writing a song about him or singing a song in front of Joe Rogan's face, like it's super cringe. I but I understand if you're that person, you live in the states, and Joe Rogan happens to be your friend. That's essentially like being the friend with the president. Do you know what I mean, I get it. It's a big deal. That can be a bit cringe. That I can put to one side. But the thing that's always kind of puzzled me has been his weird blind spot that he seems to have with Putin. Now, I get the power thing, I get the kind of in charge thing, but just the kind of complete, like, I won't say benevolence, but it's just the complete sort of oversight he seems to have with the fact that how most people view Putin isn't the way he views him. And for whatever reason, he has it in his head that the way he approaches life in terms of love and all this nonsense and I block you with love and all this gay shit that somehow that's legitimately going to save the world and now he posted this tweet off the back of what's happening in ukraine and russia or between ukraine and russia sharing his thoughts and opinions and how he's trying to basically help or add to the situation it's just baffling this legitimately come out of a grown-up's head and he sat there and thought this is a good thing to share with the world and he legitimately stands by it too it's just like are you insane are you nuts but it does make a lot of sense because to be I think to be a success at that sort of level, you kind of have to have this weird self important grandi like you know feelings of grandiose where you just legitimately feel like you're gonna change the world with a podcast like that's that's the that's the kind of person he feels like he is, and I think some of those guys are it's like the comedian guys right and the l a comedy people they legitimately think stand up comedy is way more important than what it actually is when really for the most part it's just a group for the majority of it there's some people that make a lot of money and some people that are worth caring about but for most of it it's most people just you know telling dick jokes in a flipping casino somewhere right in the middle of nowhere that no one gives a shit about or in some dive bar somewhere where half the people are just drunk off flipping chicken wings and shit do you know what i mean but they legitimately think these guys are like scholars they think they're flipping aristotle and whatnot when they get up on their stage and now that disease has somehow spread to podcasters um anyway he says the following here's his tweet lex freedom on twitter says as follows i stayed up all night talking to people in ukraine and russia we don't get it. i'll publish the mark zuckerberg podcast another to another day or another today he's got a, pub, a podcast coming with mark zuckerberg i guess it's going to be interesting if you're a fan it, it, lex is really hard to listen to with his voice and how he speaks how monotone it is just imagine an exchange of fake pleasantries and connection and insight and whatever between mark zuckerberg and flipping lex friedman that sounds like two ai bots from tesla flipping trying to talk to each other do you know what i mean but that'll be interesting regardless who cares um he continues i'll travel to russia and ukraine i will speak to citizens and leaders including putin he legitimately thinks he's gonna like if he if he does it fair enough kudos to you but it's a legitimately think you're going to be able to get in front of Putin in the middle of a flipping war and talk to him about love and what pull out your guitar and write a song about how you think he could change himself if he just listened to your podcast or if he just did 10 burpees and listened to flipping David Goggins audiobook like what it continues war is pain my words are useless I said my love is all I have i send my love we don't need your love we need your podcast your podcast is brilliant keep interviewing scientists and stuff and people who claim to be very smart and whatnot cool continue to do that people like myself who are dummies we can pretend to be smart by listening to smart people talk about smart things we can buy their books read them not read them post covers on flipping instagram and get the dopamine hit of letting people know that we're all so smart it's a cool it's a good little economy we're all kind of you know everyone wins in that space but when he starts to step into what talking to world leaders trying to shape the world trying to change the world via the medium of what a dark suit and a, you know what a black suit black tie and a white shirt you're definitely going to save the world with that one isn't it like what the hubris bro the narcissism is just wild but it makes sense just the other day i saw a clip of flipping brendan Schwab talking about how he thinks he's gonna take joe rogan's spot like yeah i'm the next con coming up when i take his spot his spot this guy legitimately thinks because rogan left to go to texas that there's now a spot free in like the comedy scene in la that brendan schubb is the one to step in and occupy it he legitimately thinks people like him like joe rogan enough you know joe rogan's already a bit of a weird one even though i'm a fan of his because i think 
his idea and how he's kind of views the world is a bit skewed because he is legitimately like at the apex of the mountain no one's ever going to say anything bad about him or about what he does who's in a position of prominence because they all want to get on that show because that shows a ticket to the flipping bank in it yeah you can basically build a whole entire career off the back of that look at what brendan shaw did that's essentially what he did that friendship with joe is you know being a real godsend in that regard and and even he has a very skewed way in how people kind of view him or his position in life and i don't know it's very skewed because he doesn't really get a lot of you would say dissenting voices coming his way apart from Ari Shafir when he's on the flipping podcast and some of these people you feel like they only spend time around intellectuals talking about how they can solve the world's issues with a podcast or a white sheet or an app or some sort of supplement they don't really speak to regular people normal people who just have to kind of go about their regular lives who are struggling to put a meal on the table who maybe eat McDonald's twice a week or three times a week or five times a week you know who are really happy with their twenty six thousand pound a year you know customer service job because it allows them the freedom to do other things that they want to do people who are you know balancing an entire family off a twenty six thousand pound a year kind of salary job like people who go on holiday once every two years like they don't hang around with regular people so they have this very skewed warped way of looking at the world that they honestly legitimately think that all of their little conversations they have with people <clears throat> are legitimately helping to kind of you know i don't know influence policy change nations and the shape of things to come and whatnot it's like what bruv how long have you heard people on podcasts talk about ubi universal base universal basic income with the exception of some places that have you know like the uk where we have some sort of form of benefits where has ubi really been implemented in a big way that would make sense Americans haven't even got free healthcare. And these motherfuckers really think sitting there on a podcast is actually going to change things. You want to change things? Implement free healthcare. Push for that in your flipping country. Focus on that one. Don't go and try and change the landscape of geopolitics and flipping places that you, you know, that you have no business being in in the first place. Places that you don't understand. Leaders that you clearly think are far more redeemable than the entirety of the world does everyone else looks at flipping putin as the reincarnation of hitler whereas lex friedman looks at him as if like he's a project like i can fix him like that kind of gay um you know hot boy sort of meme that people do oh i can fix him that's what he sort of looks at that's what he looks at him like yeah let me just sit him down make him watch a couple of motivational videos a bit of gary v a bit of david goggins a bit of joe rogan and then suddenly he's going to change his way he's going to listen to jordan peterson he's going to get his room in order and then he won't you know think about sending helicopters and paratroopers into flipping odess and flipping bombing buildings and stuff like that that let's just do that that's going to change things like what are you insane are you legitimately insane in the membrane and I don't understand these people. Like, why can't you just be good at what you do and focus on that? Instead of talking about this nonsense. So instead of talking this nonsense about stuff that you don't understand, especially this perspective, why couldn't he just put out a podcast talking about his experience growing up in Russia and how difficult it's been and the struggles and the conflicts that's gone from Ukraine and things he's heard about from his dad. Da, 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 da. That'd be a great thing to learn about because he's a Russian dude. That makes sense. Connections over there. I'm sure he has family over there, friends over there. Cool. Or just put out the Mark Zuckerberg podcast so people can distract themselves from all the horrors that are going on over there for a bit. I don't know. Maybe just focus on your flipping job. You know, maybe, maybe just stick to what you're good at. Maybe, maybe. But then again, maybe he legitimately thinks he's so good that he can take the Lex Freeman podcast into, into the flipping, into the walls of the Kremlin. And this is somehow going to change because these guys are legitimately nuts. It's as nuts as those people who say fashion or design can save the world. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. People are still pillaging, raiding, murdering and raping. It doesn't matter because you design a really nice chair. No one cares about your really nice chair. No one cares about a really nice jacket that you made. No one cares about the cut of your trousers. No one cares. The world keeps turning. People have real lives, real struggles they're going through. They're not going to be safe for a podcast especially not flipping vladimir putin like what oh yeah yeah i know this guy doesn't get the best sort of shine in the west you know they paint him out to be a villain and to be a bit of a bond villain in that regard yeah cool but if you read enough books 
if you watch enough documentaries and you do enough research, you will come to the conclusion that it's most likely right and true what they say about him. Vladimir Putin is an irredeemable character for the most part. You know, Ukraine, Russia is a totalitarian government for the most part. You can't exactly stand up and oppose his point of view, even if you're a political opponent. What happened to that Alexei, whatever his name is? He's still in prison, right? Yes, he might be an undercover CIA agent or more, whatever. Whatever people think about what, he, what his actual true motives are. But a political opponent has been in prison for how long now? How long now? Because he what? He says some mean things about Putin. That he now has been chucked into prison for an ungodly, for an ungodly time until his trial awaits and from there what happens to his trial is he get let out probably not and this is the person you want to sit down with and heal with love through the power of a flipping Sennheiser microphone ah oh, do me a favor man these people are absolutely disturbed in the brain legitimately disturbed and then the thing is they'll come back and say to people who dissent or push back to them oh you're haters no we're not we're not haters you're cultural voices you people that people we people listen to your conversations we consume your content we sometimes buy the stuff that you make we have a right to also say some things share our opinion on what you do the same way you share your opinion of what other people do on a continuing basis but then they look at and say oh that's hating it's like what how does that make any sense i don't know but regardless lex freedom is an absolute dork like dork with a capital d like i'm gonna heal him with love sod off <laughs> anyway let's continue um Kanye West on the two uh event happened I think was it in Miami it's for the album he does this weird performance art it I guess I don't really know what the point of it is I guess it's sort of like a listening party it kind of flips it on his head because usually when you drop an album or when you when you're yeah when you drop an album you usually do it the conventional way is like you make a you, you, you put an album together you pick some singles or maybe you put you put the singles first whatever way you do it you put the album out and then you then tore the album. That's what people get to see your kind of vision of the album in real time, in kind of in actual, yeah, in sort of like a three D sort of world. And these days, especially the higher echelon artists, the Travis Scotts, the Post Malones, the Billy Eilishes, the Doja Cats, um, the Lil Nas X, all these people, right? The highest of the highest, the Bad Bunnies, all these people, they use the live shows as a way to kind of really immerse the fans in their world right to really take them on a journey sort of thing and for the most part it's a good long term strategy too because it allows you to have fans for life because if you have if you go to one really good post malone show you're probably going to stick with him forever even though you probably would be a fan of his forever but if you were to go to his show and just see him standing in front of a dj booth rapping you'd be pissed off but the fact that it's got these crazy visuals and it's great lighting and fireworks and stuff and maybe cameos from guest artists it kind of adds to the whole appeal so in some regard, maybe Kanye flipped it on his head by just doing them first. So he does the kind of first performance of the album. I don't know. I think the, the, the actually the first Donda album, I think he did three in it, right? But in general, he's kind of flipping his head. So he's going to go on tour. He does a first performance. Um, so you can actually get a feel of the whole album itself. You can see the guests. You can see his aesthetic, what he's thinking, the themes behind it, draw whatever things you want to draw from the visual, visuals you see. And you get to hear the album play. So it's cool. And they actually... For the most part tech production wise they take a lot of care in the making of the show because the audio is usually immaculate like when the first on the drop i'm pretty sure i got the rip of the album off of the the rip that i got of the the, the rip i got of the album was was pulled from the audio of the live stream because the audio was that good it cleaned up a little bit you know but the person put it together big up um and then i uploaded it onto my phone it was pretty decent sounding so they're usually a good way to listen to the album this time around not so much the first half of the album was pretty solid you heard some whatever that was really nice and then for whatever reason they had some tech issues and the album went to complete shit they were replaying old stuff and it just it just didn't go well in terms of the overall um event and it made you really wonder like <sighs> for all the delays because it's never on time right the album hasn't dropped um, he did an event, he put it out there, it was happened on the 22222, which was obviously symbolic and nice and whatnot, cool. But in terms of actually putting out an album that we can all listen to and have on our phones, it's still not out yet. Of course, we can't have it on our phones because this, he's got this new thing that he's pushing a stem player, 
where he's essentially having his own little Walkman-y type MP3 player thing that you had to buy for $200 to have the album, which is crazy. But it's his way to kind of get ownership and to take the power back from the record labels and blah, whatever. It's just another money-making scheme. I get it. Cool. But I love the music. So, you know, whatever. I'll get it how I'll get it anyway. I'm not going to fucking buy a stem player. But still, even if you have got a stem player, from what I've read so far, there's only so far four tunes have come out only four tracks and allegedly what they're saying is that as the tracks are getting finished and mastered that's when they can be released but again we were never given this information prior and it's funny too because we never get apologies you never get an apology from him in terms of it's late you never get an explanation as to why it's late and you never get an idea as to when it is likely to drop it just drops when it drops but then you're expected to queue that's the thing as well it's always a one-way relationship with people isn't it? it's always one way it's always consume and taking what i what i'm giving to you but don't ask any questions like shut up just enjoy what i'm giving to you or don't but don't ask questions because they expect you to queue up because imagine if the stadium was empty he'd be going on rent of course it's never gonna be empty because you know it's kanye west and he's a flipping beast but if it was empty he wouldn't be happy so you queue up i think i saw pictures of people you know queuing to get flipping um yeezys because they had a merch that put they had on sale they had slides that were on sale like really cool stuff right um that people were obviously wanted to buy cool 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 it got too hectic and they had to shut it down so all that was obviously nice for the for the bank balance but then everything else the actual music that people want to hear wasn't because i'd imagine that uh, it'd be hard yeah would it be fair to say the majority of people that go to these things actually want to hear the music i would say so right let's say it's in the high 80s maybe the low 90s the people that really just want the music yes there's mostly there's gonna be a lot of hype beasts there people and streetwear people who people just want to flip shoes and whatnot or merch but for the most part you're really there for the music so when the music doesn't drop it's like what's the point i guess you get a good live show but is it even is it really a good live show no i don't think so especially these ones his performances are good that larry hoover one he did was fucking phenomenal and usually they're always pretty decent because Kanye is one of the only rappers especially the big ones no the only rappers in general who kind of performs without a backing track so he actually raps you know with the assistance of kind of a couple of ad-libs here and there maybe a verse and a, hopefully a verse on a, on a chorus but he actually raps his raps he doesn't just stand there and scream into the microphone or whatnot so that's commendable but this wasn't really a live show it was just an mp3 playing or a laptop playing the tunes a laptop that i guess wasn't the right one because some of the tunes got fucked up or whatnot and then you know people just bobbing their heads in the stadium i guess maybe if you're in a stadium hearing your good speakers or something but imagine leaving your house paying the ticket to go to that event parking food accommodation whatever just to hear it play through a speaker and all rapping and then when they did rap it it always sounded out sick horrible the only best thing about it was this seen jack harlow on stage i've always been a big fan of jack harlow and unfashionably so i've always thought he's an artist that has a lot of range or rapper that has a lot of versatility i like his tone i like the things that he talks about i like the fact that he's not trying to be something that he's not he's clearly just a, a you know what what he says on the tin like a white rapper that was from a certain part of america talking about his basically college experience and growing up and whatnot i love all that sort of shit and i legitimately think he's pretty versatile i really do think there's a lot of scope and range to him so when i saw that tweet that Kanye put out where he was kind of bigging him up i thought it was a sarcastically kind of you know taking the piss but it clearly wasn't because soon after we saw pictures of them hanging out and then soon after we saw him performing so i'm not sure if it was all done beforehand <coughs> and that was part of the rollout or if it happened in that short space of time in a couple of days where jack harlow went from just being a guy who put out a video that everyone liked to suddenly being doing a song with Kanye that's going to be his new album but I thought the song that they played was sick and Jack Hollis verse was really strong too I was a big fan of that and that was really all about it it was funny to see Marilyn Manson and flipping the baby on stage together there was absolutely zero interaction between the both of them Marilyn Manson looked a lot less bloated than he has done in other times that I've seen him on stage there um, so that was quite cool but they didn't really interact with each other whatsoever. That was interesting to see. Um, uh, and then, of course, the other interesting part to see was Playboy Carter's evolution in terms of his aesthetic and how he basically presents himself. And I'm I'm all for it. Again, maybe because I've been dressing like this for many years anyway, and I grew up basically um, 
I grew up basically being one of the only kind of black kids in my area that would listen to head metal music, listen to punk music, go to metal festivals and whatnot, which kind of did hamper my ability to try and pull girls from my area because they really weren't into the aesthetic of me wearing my flipping baggy combat pants and, you know, DC shoes and whatnot and wristbands with studs on it. It was, wasn't something that girls really liked back then because, you know, they wanted a particular kind of looking guy and I really didn't fit that mold, especially being a black kid. So I definitely vibe with this. And I think as an artist, <coughs> in terms of how he's changing his sound, it all makes sense. Playboy Carter's sound and everything from his kind of self-titled to the dial lit to whole lot of red. They're all kind of aesthetic changes too, but they're all kind of artistic changes. So when you do that, I would imagine part of the artistic change would be to kind of get your mind into kind of believing you're that person by changing everything about you whether it's the movies you watch the songs you listen to i'd imagine he's probably listened to a lot of stuff outside of hip-hop to kind of get him into that mode you know visuals videos clothes you're buying and you know, especially with brands like because i'm pretty sure he's way because he play with Carter came out to obviously perform the off the grid with fabio foreign i'm pretty sure in this video this clip here where he's part of the video he's wearing head to toe Vetemar or something along those kind of lines. I'm pretty sure because most of this sort of aesthetic came from that. I'm uh, pretty sure it was maybe for spring 2021 collection <coughs> or one of them. Does a lot of that kind of raver, uh, crump sort of style type of dressing. <coughs> Sorry, allergies coming at me again. But that's basically something that I would have definitely expect him to wear but it was funny to see people on the live stream freaking out when they saw him but i don't think it's that much of a deviation from the goth vampire girl gay vampire thing that he was going for with the whole rick and the alix kind of head-to-toe look this is just maybe an evolution the next kind of common stage f phase of it and again he's an artist musical artist i want him to be a bit weird i want him to kind of go off on a deep end i want him to maybe embrace different looks to kind of try different things why not like let's be a bit more experimental and i think there was a really good quote i saw via this instagram page that i follow which is who is celebrity vice let me see if i can get up on here bear with me they had a really good caption that they wrote regarding um payboy carty's kind of transformation at the show which i was really all for oh not now get off notifications why always do that to me let's see here who is yeah, there we go yeah, so this page had a really good um, kind of interpretation of his outfit change. It was here. Let me see if I can get it. There you go. Got it on there. Yeah, so Curtis who, who, um, who, who is Celebrity Vice. And it's a quote taken from Michael Jackson, supposedly. It says as follows. Uh, Michael Jackson said these following words. And this is an image that shows Playboy Carter in the right at the Donda 2 live stream. And then Playboy Carter, yes, in maybe the self-titled era where he used to wear a lot of Supreme. I think there's a Rick Owen pants still, Dr. Martin boots. So it's somewhat similar to what he's going for at the moment. But aesthetically looking wise, he was more streetwear, conventional sort of hip hop looking here. And then, of course, he's progressing to looking like this at the moment which again i wasn't really i don't think the outfit was really that good personally i think his friend looked better the kid with the spiky hair looked amazing i don't think the, the outfit was that great i probably wouldn't have worn that um lace top thing i probably maybe worn a really tight sing singlet or t-shirt or whatnot i thought how the boots were dropped or every shit personally for me personally i don't think it was that good but let's continue and people calling him jeff hardy but yeah the quotes for mac jackson as follows it says mac jackson said as follows yeah, I want a whole new character, a whole new look. I should be a totally different person. People should never think of me as the kid who sang ABC. I want you back. I should be the new incredible actor, singer, dancer that will shock the world. He says, I will do no interview. I will be magic. I'll be perfectionist, a researcher, a trainer, a master. I'll be better than ever. Every great rap actor ro uh, roped in on one. Um, roped in one sorry i must have the most incredible training um system to dig and dig and until i find i will study and look back at the whole world as I mentioned before of entertainment and perfect it take it steps further than where the greatest left off michael jackson on the day he decided to evolve all caps playboy carter kind of the console would pay for the experience so yeah and then you know there's i think carter shared a text of him texting carney saying that they should go on tour together which i would be 
there for 100 percent a tour with playboy carly and kylie would be fucking amazing maybe kylie could convince playboy kylie to actually rap on the stage instead of just screaming um, which is definitely a thing that he does and enjoys but i would pay good money to go to a show hear playboy carly perform his tracks without the backing track because i think it would add a completely other dimension to it I, I don't know why i guess you know why would you want to change it if you don't need to but that would be sick to see let's see play this well, i said this off it's too loud apologies for that uh what else is said here iconic yep i definitely agree with that one but yeah man big up big up the show but yeah the show was a bit of a dud in that regard it didn't necessarily work too great the sound was a bit off towards the end um kind of threw his mic into the ground but maybe the whole point of these sort of things is this this is courtesy of a a, a photographer called just sobel and he took some really beautiful pictures of Kanye at the Donda 2 performance. Like, maybe this is part of the reason why these things exist. There are they're basically a content generating, a content generation concert, right? There's not really a thing for you to actually listen to a finished project because it's not finished. But that's what it basically is. It's a it's a place where you can go and actually, you know, get your Instagram off, show that you're part of culture, you're taking part in a monumental event, blah de blah blah blah. But in terms of actually listening to good music or being able to, I don't know, see a good performance, that's not what you see. It's all just content. Like, you know, because everything here looks very Instagrammable, right? It fits really well on the square. It fits really well on the, you know, come a couple of images attached onto Twitter and shit. Which again, I've been using far more than Instagram. How about you guys? Same? I've been on Twitter like way more these days than I was on Instagram. And I was here and I'm sharing way more pictures on there than I ever did on Insta on Instagram too. It's which is a shame because for the most part when I'm on Instagram I share stuff on my stories and that's about it. I'm hardly ever on there, but yeah. Yeah, I guess the content was cool, but I would have preferred to hear the album. But you know, I guess we'll have to wait and get it when we get it. We'll get an observation from him because it looks like Kanye is busy, judging from this post. It looks like he's busy hanging out with um his uh his new piece now that isn't um what you call it? What's her name? What's that girl's name? Jody, whatever. See, I even forget her name. Julia Fox. He's got a new boo already at the moment. Someone called uh, Cheney Jones, who everyone's calling a uh, Kim Kardashian lookalike. Um, but yeah, I guess it's funny though, isn't it? Because she's probably, I guess she's probably somewhat mixed race or something, right? Or somewhat Latina. But then you get called a Kanye lookalike, even though no, yeah, Kim lookalike, even though your kind of attributes are something that those women usually pay for you know in terms of the shape and the bums and the tits and the whatnot it must be a weird place to live in it the lips it must be a weird place but yeah what do i know what do i know anyway we move on from that one next on the list to talk about uh oh yeah we've got to talk about this man crazy stuff on the timeline happened in relation to the whole megan the stallion Tory line shooting i know it keeps rumbling on and on it's legitimately might be one of the most long drawn out court cases or cases in general involving a celebrity i've ever seen usually they try and wrap it up quickly because you know either part he just wants to move on and make money and be rich and famous or it just goes to court quicker i don't know one or the other but it seems like maybe because of covid i guess it's definitely because of covid or just because of stalling tactics from megan the stallion's team because i'd imagine if you're making the stallion's team and you legitimately feel like it might not go your way the one thing you want to do is keep stalling so that you have time to you know make shit up so you can basically um come out of this not too bad but essentially what happened there was some sort of altercation where allegedly Tory Lanez was accused of shooting Megan Thee Stallion he wasn't accused Meg came out and said it you know he shot me and you know since then people decided to counter Tory his career went down to shit for the most part even though he basically stayed creating which is a great thing to see because I still think those two albums that he made <coughs> off the back of that tragedy incident whatever were definitely some of his best work the live performances the videos he's put together he's actually a better artist than he than he was before the shooting so it's definitely served him well in that regard artistry wise but I'd, I'd assume in terms of money and in terms of you know being able to go out and do shows and stuff it's definitely affected him like let's not deny that we know behind the scenes brands and sponsors have pulled out he's probably had shows cancelled i'm sure it's cost him in the tens of millions this whole court case because everyone wants to basically wait until the coast is really because it looks like the coast is clear because what you've seen so far we've seen post with tory with bieber with this person lebron shouting him out pretty much everyone 
is under the assumption that most likely he didn't do what Megan's assume, alleging he did. But some of the bigger people, the Live Nations and all these people that are really kind of the money people and the movers and shakers who kind of allow you to do shows or do this, whatever, give the green light to things to get done. I bet those are the people who are really kind of waiting to see what the court case says. But <clears throat> so it's definitely affected me a negative. Whereas in Megan Thee Stallion's case, she's got Grammys. She's won Grammys. She's won awards. All this nonsense, which I think I'm in a minority to say, but I definitely think that's definitely made, that's definitely been more negative than the positive. If you're winning those awards based off your actual talent and your music being actually popular, cool. But if you're winning it just because of sympathy, because people feel like you're the victim of, you know, domestic violence or a gun flipping you know whatever that's called what's a gun thing it's a gun thing domestic violence too i don't know regardless but if you if you're basically it feels like if you're a woman that's been harmed in that kind of altercation and people feel sorry for you that's why they give you the award it's not a good thing because it means they're only giving the award out of sympathy then when the music suffers then the sympathy is not there anymore then what so it's actually been a hindrance because it's not allowed her as an artist to actually grow in any meaningful way in my opinion but you know what do i know but out of nowhere, development came out because I guess they were meant to be in court. And academics posted this, courtesy of Glock Topics, it says the follows. Um, um, it says, academics with a post and delete about Meg and Tory case. And he says as follows, breaking, it was revealed in court a few moments ago that Tory Lane's DNA was not found on a weapon in Megan Thee Stallion's case, which is a big, big, big development because that would essentially mean Tory wasn't guilty. He did nothing wrong. And everything that he's been kind of blamed for and the consequences that he suffered was all for nothing and he's had a big fat apology and it also means that Megan lied like you know um willingly or whatever under duress she definitely lied about it so that's what it would mean if that was true <clears throat> and obviously he posted that and then deleted it and off the back of that um no it's just off the back of that Oh yeah, off the back of that, Meg said something. She replied to him, got annoyed. And then I think um, then Tori replied back off that, said, you, you can't buy and tweet your way out of this one, not today, because the truth is finally getting out. She then replied to that, his tweet said as follows. And she just escalated. She took it to the next level and said, um, uh, lie, lie your way out of this, she said. Um, if you ain't do this, if you ain't do this shit, why was you apologizing for the, she, she puts it all caps the lawyers got your phone records and mine all your texts they got you recorded on a jail phone talking to kelsey apologizing begging us not to talk and she posts a screenshot of her phone with tory lanes on there and the message he reads meg i know you probably are never going to talk to me again but i generally want you to know i'm sorry from the bottom of my heart and i was just too drunk none of the nonetheless the shit should have never happened and i can't change what i did i just feel horrible so it's obviously him groveling the night after you know we've all done it before we've all been in kind of um compromising situations with females where we've kind of maybe sent some of those texts but it also it's open-ended because it could be anything but it gives you the impression that maybe he's apologizing for the alleged shooting then Tory replies the next level up and he says nah that's not what I apologize for and he says as follows he says good dick had me fucking two best friends which is Tory and Kelsey I'm sorry Megan and Kelsey I'm assuming the girl that you know is no longer around Megan anymore it looks like and I got caught shrugs shrug emoji that's what I apologize for it's sick how you spun it though so it looks even worse now Megan because it looks like she purposely tried to mislead everybody with this screenshot that shows him apologizing to make it seem like he was apologizing for the shooting well he's actually saying the reason why we were arguing in that car and the reason why that shooting or something happened that skirmish was because meg or kelsey or one of them somebody found out that you know they were in some sort of a love triangle and that's what basically started the whole beef which for whatever reason megan hasn't really acknowledged or hasn't really even i don't think she's even admitted that she even was intimate with Tory she just kind of just I don't know just the shooting the shooting the shooting which is a great way to spin a narrative I guess um and then um Tory posts some really I think pretty decent um words in terms of being the bigger person is because I think if this was me and I generally didn't do what I'm being accused of especially when it comes to this sort of stuff shooting of a woman like 
this is stuff that you, especially if you're found guilty, is stuff that you can legitimately never recover from. And society should never let you recover from, right? Especially if you're in that privileged position of being a musician. This should be something that you should just, it means that your career is over. You just go and get work a regular job. It is what it is because you know, it's a privilege. You, this position that you have is a privilege. Especially if your fans don't want you anymore as well, that's another thing too. But um, it's definitely something that you shouldn't be taking lightly. So if I generally think someone's lying on me, I would want to get see them get as much i would want to see that person get as much buried as i was getting buried in public for sure i wouldn't be this gracious no way but tory for some reason was and he says as follows in the following tweets um courtesy of glock topics he says as follows he says here um, they lied to someone i thought was my friend they coerced her into digging a hole that is now going to look crazy to the whole community she riled up she's not at fault they are and it's sad because they truly don't care what happens to her when it's all said and done it continues as they use this narrative to separate black women from black men they made it so the protection of black women suddenly meant the unprotecting of black men funny because it was right when it was right when the, for the first time we were all somewhat standing together for the same cause crazy so he's been quite gracious in this whole affair and who knows what's basically happened we have no idea what occurred it is looking more likely more likely than not <coughs> especially with the lack of dna being found in the gun because i think if the dna was on the gun it was it was conclusive i think tory would have been done for already but it also goes to show how powerful how important it is to have record labels and to be signed by the right people and stuff like as bad as some of those deals can be some of the benefits that come with it is the fact that they can maybe sweep some things under the rug they can help you out of this help you out of that especially if you're a talent especially if somebody is bringing in money and you're an asset they'll do everything in their power to protect you because it's effectively their kids tuition fees at private schools their mortgages um, their homes their cars their vacations they're all off the back of your success or basically your ability to generate income or to perform or whatnot so it's there it's in their business to ensure that Meg can come out of this as great as she can or they can store as much as they can or paint her out to be as the, the, the good person because their entire family's future is resting on this case effectively so when you sign to these major record labels whether you're in a big record label or you're with a management company that rock nation whatever you're doing these people that rock nation they do a lot behind the scenes like this is what they do they seed misinformation propaganda they divert attention they store cases because for sure i think if this if this was the other way around and meg would had a stronger defense this would have been wrapped up quickly because to try to move on the fact that they've drawn this out so long leads me to believe that probably she lied and i'm interested to see what happens as a as a consequence of this if it does come out that she purposely lied or you know misremembered misspoke whatever way they want to spin it and basically cause somebody to lose a huge part of their career uh distress whatever all these sort of things happen i wonder what happens how does she get dealt with in the public does she get that with kid gloves people basically say she was under distress and she didn't know and black people black women should be believed more i don't know i wonder what the reaction is going to be that's because really, we know what's gonna happen if tory is guilty that's you know that 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 goes about saying especially you know in his position given how he's been defending himself people are going to be willing and eager to bury him for sure and especially if he finds guilty in the court of law court he probably deserves it but if, if it found that meg lied what will people do society how would they react because that's a pretty egregious lie to stand up there under oath and say yeah you shot me even though you know he didn't do it that's pretty egregious in my opinion but you know what do i know on that regard what do i know absolutely nothing um moving on <clears throat> what's i to talk about here what else did i see here i wanted to speak about oh yeah let's talk about this quickly oh man one of my favorite brands looks like it's going through a tough time and i'm really pissed off because they were pretty decent it's founded by one of my favorite skaters of all time somebody that i basically fell in love with when i first started getting into skateboarding and somebody who i kind of tried to mimic the style of when i was skating myself um but it looks like it might be over for fucking awesome it looks like it might be over i call this the how, how do you pronounce that brand's name is it aries or rise whatever let's call it aries it's the Ariesification or arise yeah aries yeah let's say it's the Ariesification of fucking awesome has taken place for their spring 2022 collection because this effectively just looks like what they make like this kind of like 
dusty hipster hot art ho kind of chic thing um but yeah it doesn't look great or maybe it's more of a pivot into the kind of weirdo avant-garde type style of dressing that you know our legacy do and stuff but it's still not a great image it's, it's still a bad copy or a bad imitation of what Aries does and of what our legacy does in some way shape or form um and i much prefer the aesthetic that fucking awesome what doom beforehand what jason dill's vision of it was before because it was stuff that you could imagine him wearing <coughs> stuff that basically had an edge to it but wasn't too crazy stuff that was practical but wasn't too boring just just cool clothes but now it's descended into kind of try hard fingernail polish wearing dudes with pearls who skate in loafers who roll their cigarettes up in front of stores and you know have beanies on top of their hats and stuff and have ironic flipping simpson tattoos and whatnot nah man this is not my vibe it's just, and there's enough of those brands out there <clears throat> sorry hey fever it's not a bad thing but there's just enough of those brands out there we don't need more do you know what I mean that's why fucking awesome was great to begin with but this neon suit isn't too bad don't get me wrong but again do we need a weekday type denim suit in lime green done by fucking awesome or can we just leave this to weekday and stuff probably can that cardigan's decent but again pretty lazy got the fucking awesome monogram written all over it a cardigan again you know we're still doing cardigans in 2022 we're not going to leave those anytime soon are we is the cardigan the new ma1 because that's that's what happens in it? every season a new every company's got a, their in rendition of an ma1 bomber jacket they can't let those things go maybe this is the same rendition of it as well um i'm tired of it uh, another cardigan another color should you ever have t the same item in different colors in the same lookbook you shouldn't really should you it maybe shows the lack of options in the line maybe I don't know. Maybe that's me. <clears throat> one's open, one's closed, one's a woman, one's a guy. But yeah, there's a kind of. Um, I do like what they do here. This is something that's interesting because I think in every collection so far that I've seen or that kid has an eye on when it comes to fucking awesome, they've always got a really interesting iteration or kind of version of a coach jacket. And I think this is the same here. This it's not a coach jacket. It's got a zip on it. Maybe it's a bit different. Technically, a coach jacket has buttons on it, right? on the shoe but anyway let's say it's a coach jacket the last one they did was like a crushed sort of like metallic sort of thing and now they've got this it looks like a pvc type style jacket which looks pretty decent i'm not gonna lie that's pretty nice i'd wear the hell like that um another, <clears throat> another jean jacket shirt thing with a print on the inside i'm assuming with some original um jason deal artwork the model hasn't hasn't even flipping you know creamed his lips or anything I just come on man this is looking mad dusty i'm not gonna lie bro i'm not gonna lie the pants are all right the shoes are they collaboration or they're just like her own shoes i don't know <clears throat> let's continue yeah that's the shirt again on the inside out yeah some cool artwork on it but again is there anything to write home about probably not there's a crochet kind of shirt e blousey thing there giving me bianca chandon vibes this sort of overshirt flannel thing is really nice i gotta be honest with this kind of utility pockets all over the front of it it looks pretty decent especially with the light denim the fucking awesome half zip with the with the strings on the hood Ugh, i'm not sure about that at all that looks really bad man yeah this is even Again, because I think when I talk about Aries, Ariesification of this brand, because Aries for me is always very hot and cold. They'll have, for every one look, they'll have seven bad ones. You know what I mean? And it looks like stuff that doesn't look good on its own. It looks like stuff that only looks good in combination. So, I don't know, man. Comparing what a fucking awesome are offering here compared to like a Pop Trading Co., the levels are just another level, in it? This is just not that great. I have to be honest. Some of the jumpers and sweatshirts are pretty decent don't get me wrong uh but yeah man it's just i don't know what happened man what's jason deal doing some of these shirts are okay the short sleeve again but this is not what you come for fucking awesome too this is not what you come too fucking awesome for in my opinion yeah this lookbook is terrible i'm not gonna lie man this might be one of the worst fucking awesome collections i've ever seen um let's just go back in the history books and see some of the previous ones so i'm not chatting shit but i'm pretty sure this is one of the worst ones i've ever seen maybe he's maybe he's changed the designer that he's working with maybe he's doing it all on his own i'm not too sure but 
like you know look just look at that cardigan from before that's that sold out in an instant right this psychedelic one from like december last year compared to what i just saw you do before terrible um does that store look at like somewhere that will sell those things no uh drop two even this drop wasn't my favorite but there was some decent stuff in there we'll check that out and four was that 420 yeah the same one 42021 we'll check that one out uh collaborations again let's go to the next page i want to see a spring one and see if i'm not bugging out see if i'm not really changing shit. it's just not my eyes let's see the next collection here come on load 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 as we go here too yeah look at this this is from drop two or oh, let's go to the main drop this one right so this is um for winter 2021 2021 yep with um what's his face jason deal uh modeling most of the bits and it looks dramatically better maybe it's because it's outside and the photography is better i'm not too sure but even the short sleeves look better the pants look better baseball shirts the sweats look better better bomber jacket like everything here is much better than what i just saw and it's not even there's not even much range it's still like one of, again that's the crushed sort of like metallic coach jacket thing they had going on there that was I regret not being able to purchase, man. I should have copped that when it came out. But yeah, it's not, it's much better than what we're seeing, isn't it? Like, look at that stuff. That lime a suit that I guess he keeps doing again and again. But this is a far better iteration of it than the other thing that we saw. Uh, hopefully it's not the same thing. But yeah, look, it's much better. Much, much better. I don't know what's happened, man. Yeah, this is from spring, summer 20. Let's see what this is I'm saying. Oh, man, what's happened to Jason Dill and fucking awesome? It's really gone to shit. Yeah, this is from Spring Summer 20 collection, right? Courtesy of Hypebeast that I'm showing here on screen. Let's see if I can get this zoomed up. Come on, hurry up. My computer's running like an absolute snail. But yeah, loading again. Jason Dill's modeling. You know, he's wearing a fucking awesome um jacket with i guess some of his original artwork with faces cut up and stuff like he likes to do with some black trousers and some loafers looking cool like great stuff you know great imagery like everything looks awesome even the art around it looks much better like it's giving really undercover vibes in terms of the lookbook but it looks far better than the stuff that we saw maybe not all of it is fucking awesome because i saw a kid with fucking with cowboy boots on there i'm pretty sure that's not part of it but yeah, we're not seeing a lot of clothes here. This lookbook is mostly about art. But yeah, loads of good, much better stuff here already than what we saw previously in other collections. So I don't know what's going on, man. Hopefully this isn't a mark of the future to come because that collection was absolutely garbage in my opinion. But, you know, hopefully he fixes up and gets things back to where they should be because I still think it's a pretty decent brand in my opinion. But that new collection just isn't it in my opinion it's not it it's not it at all what else do we want to check out here before we move on du, 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 du. yeah let's talk about what well, let me see if i can get these up there where are these oh where's it gonna there we go let's end it on these because i think these these really really pissed me off when i saw them because it just goes to speak about how lazy i feel like this company is in general and just how annoying they are as a company it just pisses me off so we're going to talk about nike of course and i saw these on my timeline and it just they just drove me insane and these are the new nike air motifs right and they drive me insane because they're obviously playing on the strings of sneakerheads with having Tinker Hatfield, the legendary sneaker designer of the original Air Max 87 in the background there with his flipping traditional, what you call it, um, fedora hats on that are fucking annoying. You got to bend that and burn that immediately, Tinker, please, for the love of God. But again, he's designed some of my favorite shoes, the Jordan 4, the Air Max 87. I'm not sure if he did the Air Max 90, might have done. Uh the air trainer one like stuff that has basically formed my education and my knowledge base in terms of sneakers right that's my those are my things genius of a guy but for whatever reason every new shoe that he's done so far it's not really been that great <clears throat> and for whatever reason it seems like like you have a real resistance in terms of making newer shapes like just doing new things it's all retro it's all kind of taking old things and modernizing them or bringing them into the 21st century or adding bells and whistles it's like no 
<clears throat> what I've always been annoyed by is that for the most part, a classic Air Max 1, I feel, for the most part, has been popularized mainly because of sneakerheads. Yes, general people wear them, but the main reason why people care about Air Max 1s is for sneakerheads. That's why they created fucking Air Max 1 Day or Air Max Day, right? A weird kind of like, um, what do you think called a weird sort of uh, self-flagellation session that Nike gave themselves where they can make money and also get to kind of stroke their own dicks. Cool. No problem, but it's mostly because of sneakerheads' popularity. If that's the case, why not make them to spec so that sneakerheads would no? So why not make them to spec for the community that you're clearly trying to market them to? So far, we haven't had one decent Air Max One retro in terms of shape. Yes, we've had some good collaborations. The Pata one recently have been really good in terms of shape. Cool, but overall, the quality of an Air Max One the shape of them compared to some of the vintage shapes that you see in lookbooks or scans or whatnot or you might see creep up on ebay they're not the same and i've never understood why retros especially when it comes to nike that they're, they're pushing to sneakerheads why did they, why did they just take the adidas approach and actually take a retro a vintage shoe and actually retool it get the mold whatever you need to do and bring those back to spec with the right proportions, with the right profile and shape and bubble size and materials and whatever, just take some care and attention. The same thing that Adidas did with the campuses and the superstars 80s, where they reverse engineered them and basically offered them back up to sneakheads at a kind of elevated price or whatever it may be, and they lapped them up. Why can't you do the same thing with the Air Max 1s, with the Air 90s, with the Air Max 90s, sorry, with the Air Max 87s, with the Air Max 97s, with the 95s, all these Air Maxes that are clearly positioned and marketed to sneakheads, especially when Air Max Day, Air Max Day comes along. <coughs> make them to spec exactly to the year that they came out profile everything shape with the right tissue inside the box the right box design the car make them properly and then just bump up the price and say hey these are 200 pounds these are 300 pounds i'd buy them happily because i'd much rather have that than you have you make a 2022 version of an mx1 that looks fucking hideous who's gonna wear these these are going to be a favorite of the Eastern European community, wherever you live in the world, instantly. That's who's going to wear these things because they look like an Air Max. What's that one that all the usual peers wear in London? The Air Max 270. Is it Air Max 270? Nike Air Max 270. Is it 270? Yeah, it's a 270. These shoes are the flipping, you know, being one of the popular, it's like the new uh what are they called rejuvenate so i don't know whatever it's it's definitely that shoe that basically captured the eastern european community for some reason i don't know why but those new air motifs that they've put out or that they're due to put out look exactly like that there's nothing separating that flipping air max 2270 that you see when you're out and about in some dodgy area somewhere in london right a flipping hungarian romanian off license somewhere you see a guy in his tracksuit wearing these and you know not to test them or say nothing because he's probably going to kick your head in right but these are what they look like and they're boring you're using tinker hatfield's design base to make these like why would you do that why not just save that waste of material that's going to end up in some scrap heap somewhere with some turtle gargling on a flipping shoestring and just make good shoes or make new shoes or make retros to spec and sell them to sneakerheads who you're clearly trying to market them to because sneakerheads aren't going to buy this this is going to be a shoe that's going to be popular with regular punters who aren't going to buy them at full price. They're going to wait to get see them at TK Maxx or they're going to be in JD Sports. Less of a markup in that regard. I don't get it. I really don't get it. They are absolutely hideous in every way, shape or form. So dead. Like they've, t they've just taken the Air Max 1. And again, you remember the original sort of air max one the 87 right there was a whole big window thing and supposedly they took them off because if i'm not mistaken in terms of like quality control a lot of them would bop or burst and stuff so they kind of encased the bubble a little bit more to make them somewhat um, more durable so they wouldn't break and whatnot and malfunction cool but that was what they told you but what they keep doing with these 270s and these shoes is they keep showing you that they can actually make a fat bubble they can actually make a bubble that protrudes a bit right but on an mx 95 you get a bubble that looks fucking terrible, right? It's terrible compared to the OGs, right? Look, look at the MX-35 bubble. That bubble compared to like, the, look at that new bubble they've got. Look how look how in close that is, it's shit. And then you, you type in MX-35 and you say vintage, 
right? And then you see how fat these old school bubbles were back in the day. Look at that protruding, popping out. And they tell you, oh, we can't do that anymore because they would burst and it was too much, bruv. Improve. Like, you got billions of monies. Like, fucking make them figure it out. But there's, but for some reason, they, they, they can figure it out with these monstrosities. They've got this massive bubble hanging out there. Oh, I hate them so much, bruv. Like, honestly, there's nothing that gets me as more annoyed than the fact that nike seem to be hell-bent on retros they don't seem to be have any sort of vision in terms of like actually making new shoes and actually offering something interesting to people it's just retros 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 cool if you're gonna do retros do them properly actually make them to spec they don't do them to spec they do them halfway and you know nike fanboys lap them up anyway because you know they lap them up like i do i'm not gonna be dismissive of that in fact but it just pisses me off to no extent because look at this look at the air max one vintage right or the air max one big window it seems as if, if, if that's what people can list them as oh big window window let's see see look at the back of the day look at that with the og bubble look how big that was look at how big that was if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there was a design reason for it. I forgot what the reason was for it back in the day. But look at that. Look at how big that is. Look how big that bubble is. And they, Are you telling me they can't remake shoes in that way for some reason? Why, why can't they do that? Why can't they, why can't they take that Air Max 1 in that shape, that box that's behind him, this, this sneaker guy, this sneaker collector with his fucking vintage windbreaker on his all looking sick. Why can't they take that and basically re-engineer that entire model from the bottom to the top, every fiber, every panel of it and put it back out and sell it to sneakerheads at a marked up price instead of making these motif monstrosities. Why? Tell me why. Tell me. Why not just make that? Why not just make that? And let's read some of this motive bit. Nike introduces the Air Max motive inspired by Tinker Hatfield's first ever Nike Air Max shoe. Tinker, man, you're you're letting them destroy your legacy with this stuff, bro. Why are you having your name on on this shit? Like honestly. Anyway, it continues. Um, sorry. Oh yeah, I didn't get up on screen, did I? Yeah, was it the one? Yeah, this is the one. That's the Air Max I was talking about. Why can't you just get that and basically retool it with every fiber? Right, take that take that exact air max one that came out in 1987 whenever it did come out right maybe a few years before that a couple years before that before they changed the bubble and just remake that model please instead of making that motif it's like who, who's gonna wear this shit anyway take a hand responsible for some of nike's most iconic offerings including but not limited the air max one and with the newest air max silhouette the brand is paying homage to both the designer and his beloved design is he dead no could you just redo a shoe that you obviously fuck up all the time? Yes. Just redo the shoe. God almighty. Um, dub the MX motif. The shoe is effectively a spiritual successor to the MX one. No, it isn't. As it borrows many of the same ideas. It doesn't borrow, it steals them. It looks horrible. It continues. For example, the mudguard as well as the general profile could easily be mistaken for Hatfield's creation. What? <sighs> I knew it was over when they did those. Have you seen those Air Max 1 SBs? I knew it was over. When I saw those, I was like, okay, cool, it's over. These guys are taking the piss out of our lives. Air Max 1 SBs. Have you seen these shits? I knew that was over. When I saw these Air Max 1 SBs, I thought, okay, cool, Nike are taking the piss. Why couldn't it just get a... Skateboarding is one of legitimately one of the most interesting sports, whatever you want to call it, to explore sneaker design in terms of the needs and the rigors and the kind of <coughs> strains that get put on the shoes and whatnot in terms of design you could come up with some really interesting shapes and models right pertaining to who the the, 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 the flipping skater is some skaters like shoes with a lower profile some skaters some skaters like vulcanized shoes some skaters like they have stuff bulky thinner tongue laces padding no padding heel support no, whatever the options are limitless instead you give them this an air max one mock-up like like what of an of an sb that's been what they just took out the bubble made it a bit fatter like made the toe more squared like what the fuck is this like what is this what is this shit waste of material this isn't sustainable there's a thing all these brands talk about sustainability and saving the environment but where where did these shoes go they they don't end up on the feet of sneakerheads or actual skaters they end up in what some skip somewhere they end up what down the throat of some duck somewhere gargling struggling for breath that's what they end up mate absolutely bullshit and it continues um 
the the hits of Swain and Mesh though uh, begin to subvert subvert. You telling me this is this shoe is subverted? Oh, this is I don't know, man. Some of this shit. So uh, establishing a more dynamic contemporary and feel alongside the shifted um, eye stays. Even the branding follows suit. The heel features a spliced embroidery. The tongue a more minimal display of the model's name, and the swoosh is an opaque outer layer and a, a latter of which mirrors the sole just under foot. Yeah, and they've even got a. Why has it got a clear sole? Why? Why is it has a clear sole? Tell me why there's a clear sole in there. What? So you can step into the future, like oh my god oh my god for a close look at their motif and it's six up and coming colorways take a sneak peek and again i say sneakheads because why would you send sneaker news press shots of this shoe unless you're trying to market them to sneakerheads why why would you oh your kids why would you <sighs> i hate this so much man i hate it so much anyway this is the this is the models the colorways you got the classic white and blue like, look at that shit it's, it's an abomination legit abomination i don't know how that passed the quality control test like what's that is that like a denim mud guard it's all not even a suede is it is that denim <laughs> oh i don't know bro yellow colorway all black colorway what's that zen gray sort of colorway white and in the women's i guess with the lighty colorway yo this is so shit it's unbelievable how shit these are what a waste of materials what a waste legitimately what a waste i have nothing more to say man i'm just gonna end it there before i start cussing people oh look my hay fever is clearing up as well but oh my god legitimately all the money wasted on r&d in this shoe developing it focus grouping it sending it out to influencers and shit you could just especially if you're that's the thing i would prefer if they actually made new shoes but if they're hell bent on doing the retros just remake these remake the ogs remake the actual 87 with the big window to, to spec not not the shitty way actually make them to spec please for the love of god because apart from some collaborations that we did with the pattern in terms of the shape, so far the shapes of new Air Max ones have been terrible. Unless you do this, what people do when they stand at an angle and they stuff their feet at the bottom of the toe to make them look flatter than what they actually are. But the shape of the Air Max ones are terrible. Or you've got really nice cute feet like this guy has or his pin rolls. It looks like he's got like a size 8 or 9 shoe or something. But that's not how Air Max ones actually look. Why not make them to spec like that? Like the actual OG shoes. Make them to spec please for the love of god then sell these to us sneakerheads for 200 300 400 dollars we'd happily buy them because we're already buying the crap that you're putting out anyway that's above that's way above what we should be paying for it like even the, the bws the ogs are they are they good in terms of shape compared to the ogs no they're not i, I don't get it man you got these in your arsenal i was saying oh the tooling's too expensive it's hard to remake them it's not billion dollar company i don't i don't accept those excuses just buy a vintage pair and remake it bro how are these china companies or these sorry these replica factories in china able to flip and make shoes off of one sample they're able to get they take a rick owens geo basket and they can make a whole size run of flipping shoes off of that one shoe why can't you do it with these i refuse to accept it just make this remake them again this is not even a big window this is just a regular window but it's still got the profile it's still got the materials the swoosh at an angle the great laces like it looks brilliant they could easily sell this to our sneakerheads for 200 300 and we'd pay for it easy instead we get this shit air max motive motive the motive is go in the bin the motive is these are going to be sold in tj max tk max like what jd sport specials fucking garbage imagine if you're a sneaker store and in order to get tier zero product they make you buy these shits like that's what i'd imagine that's what they do right you have to buy some inline gr type stuff this is what they push to you P sell these sell these against all the nice collaborations you've got and other things you've got <sighs> so someone who walks in who wants a pattern air max one is somehow meant to come in and also be happy to get these if they don't have the right size in the patterns yo they're taking the piss out of us man they really are taking the piss out of us anyway that is the episode number 559 
thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company if it's your first time tuning into show via you know all the other channels that you've tuned into before you know click the like maybe subscribe if you'd like to come back again that would be greatly appreciated if you listen to the podcast app i do appreciate all the feedback i've been getting especially via email there's a contact button there so if you want to contact me you can contact me via the form on the website which is www.theagasinozingashow.com but the link is in the description so you can contact me if you want to via email that's the best place to catch me at the moment because i'm not really on the most of the social media platforms so that'd be great there and of course all the reviews people are leaving on spotify as well greatly appreciated thank you for your time to click five stars or two or three or one i don't care it's good to see the feedback so people can know you know some people are listening to it out there so definitely appreciate that for all of you doing so and then of course the patrons there too if you want to tune in link is in the description as well you can tune into that one if you want to as well it's only one dollar and you get a chance to hear some you know paywalled content that i don't put out anywhere with a bit more x-rated content so it may be in some reviews of documentaries and movies and all that sort of stuff if you're into it definitely check out the patreon but this is the Billy X Show episode number 559. If you're watching via YouTube, it's just going to end. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you hear a nice tune. So if you're not listening to the audio and you want to hear the outro tune, then jump onto the audio and listen to that because I always pick some pretty cool tunes, I think, because I have excellent taste in music. But anyway, regardless, thanks for tuning in. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.